chapter of wrath. I want to give it over to Annabelle with the national anthem. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the parents fly o'er the rain service limousine and party bus company. Family owned and operated, we are an industry leader with over 25 years of experience in providing best in class luxury transportation for your special event. Whether it's your precious wedding day, an all day wine tour out east, your high school prom, that special birthday, or just an amazing night on the town, our professional chauffeurs stand ready to ensure your special event is truly special. Galaxy Luxury Coach has one of the largest and modern party bus fleets in the New York area. Our party buses are simply nightclubs on wheels. Concert sound systems, light shows, lasers and strobes, multicolor LED lighting brilliantly lights your party bus inside and out. For corporate and more laid back events, we will cater to your specific needs and requests. What sets Galaxy aside from all others in the luxury transportation industry is our attention to detail in customizing our services to your special event. At Galaxy, it's all about you and your guests. Galaxy customers return time and time again because they know they can trust Galaxy to help deliver those lifetime memorable moments. Step aboard and let your Galaxy experience be Thank mm -hmm. you. 
Yeah. You smell so good, I won't have to bathe the next two weeks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Here, laugh a little hard. <laughs> Get a, get a new sweater. The worst dressed man here tonight. <laughs> Look, get that laugh. Get that laugh and get it in there tonight because nobody else is going to laugh like her. She's under drugs, all right? Patty <laughs> is the number one fence provider on Long Island with the most inventory in stock, including vinyl, chain link, and a loop. offers a custom powder coated system that prevents rust throughout the life of the fence. We carry fence tools to the trade. We even stock wood, rail, and glass hardware as well. Shannon Gates has our very own patented locking system. The next time you need fencing of any sort, both commercial and private, give Shannon Gates a call at 631-392-4330. You can also visit our website at shannongatesinc.com. Galaxy Luxury Coach is a full-service limousine and party bus company. Family-owned and operated, we are an industry leader with over 25 years of experience in providing best-in-class luxury transportation for your special event. Whether it's your precious wedding day, an all-day wine tour out east, your high school prom, that special birthday, or just an amazing night on the town, our professional chauffeurs stand ready to ensure your special event is truly special. Galaxy Luxury Coach has one of the largest and modern party bus fleets in the New York area. Our party buses are simply nightclubs on wheels. Concert sound systems, light shows, lasers and strobes, multicolor LED lighting brilliantly lights your party bus inside and out. For corporate and more laid back events, we'll cater to your specific needs and requests. What sets Galaxy aside from all others in the luxury transportation industry is our attention to detail in customizing our services to your special event. At Galaxy, it's all about you and your guests. Galaxy customers return time and time again because they know they can trust Galaxy to help deliver those lifetime memorable moments. Step aboard and let your Galaxy experience begin. Shannon Gates is the number one fence provider. What an amazing job, Annabelle. Did. Absolutely, Brian, what'd you think? absolutely, it was great. It was yeah. great, you know, with the with the vets and the organization here, uh, and the flag, and a wonderful job she did singing. It was really impressive. You know, this whole show is let's remember always the, the troops and the veterans. We're gonna get back to them in a little while. But Annabelle right. just came fresh from Madison, Madison Square, Square Garden. Garden. She she uh, turned different. it out there, and uh, she did she did a reenactment here. It was unbelievable. And we're gonna talk to her in a few minutes. But we have Natasha. Jackapot on the phone. Natasha, are you there? Hi, I am. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Now, you have a big thing going on in about 10 minutes, which is probably going to take some viewers away from us, but explain a little bit to our audience what's going on on the Food Network. So tonight I will be competing on Cake Wars at 8 o'clock on the Food Network channel. And what are you going to be competing against? How does that work if people haven't seen the show? So I'm, I will be competing against four other great cake artists, and we will be trying to see who can make the best cake and win $10,000. So $10,000 are at stake here. So do you think you're going to win? What's going on? I know you, can, can I ask you who wins? That's good. You have to tune in to see. So everyone watch at 8 o'clock, or I know your show's going on right now, so DVR it. Okay. Then watch it right after your show. So Natasha, I invite you on the show. You're not going to tell me if you win or lose? I am not. You have to tune in. I oh, hope. my goodness. Well, if people do turn out here a little bit, how can they watch it? Where, where do they go to to watch it? So you can just, um, I guess, on your guy channel and go straight to the Food Network channel, and I will be on Food Network at 8 o'clock. And on cable, cable vision and uh, Optimum and all that, Fios and Time Warner, they could see it, it there? It's on every single cable. All right, so in about an hour from now, we're going to all know if you win or lose, right? Yes. And, and if you win or lose, you're still coming to the show next week and making cupcakes? Of course I am. Okay. <laughs> all right, Natasha. Well, we wish you well. Thank you for calling in, and I know that it's going to be great. I can't wait to see you next week. 
Thank you very much. I look forward to seeing you next week as well. All right. We're going to take a quick break on the Chapters Wrap with Annabelle in a few moments. You know you already want a Toyota, but when you want more from your Toyota store, you want Smithtown Toyota, where every Toyota comes with Smithtown Toyota's Toyota for Life program, giving you lifetime New York State inspections, lifetime 10% discounts on all parts and service, two years of complimentary oil changes, two years of scheduled maintenance, and more, all at no cost to you, plus low clear-out deals on every Toyota in stock. Get more from your Toyota store. Hurry to Smithtown Toyota. When you smell so good, I won't have to bathe the next two weeks. Yeah. <laughs> Anything. So, here, laugh a little harder. <laughs> 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 Get a, get a new sweater. The worst dressed man here tonight. <laughs> Look, get that laugh. Get that laugh and get it in there tonight because nobody else is going to laugh like her. She's under drugs, all right? We are back on the chapter's wrap. And, and Brian, I don't know if you like cupcakes or cakes, but Natasha really makes a mean All of the cake. above. All yeah. the above. Yeah, I can't wait for her. So next week is going to be really fun because she's going to be in the studio making cupcakes and it's amazing. Love it. It's amazing. Love it's amazing. It. How was your weekend? Very good. Busy, yeah. busy. Busy, busy. Getting ready for the Same show. Yep. And the weather has been like summertime. Yeah. So uh, I was I mean, coming up with a bunch of questions for Lou, and then I wound up reading his book and I had them all answered. Okay. All right. So well, good for his book and uh -huh. bad for me. Yep. Yep. Well, you're an author, so you know all about I'll books. I'll manage. You'll manage. You'll manage. manage. But before we go any further here. We have Annabelle, the lovely Annabelle Hello. here, live in studio. <laughs> How do you get up there and sing, not just Madison Square Garden, but here at Madhouse? How did that happen? <sighs> to be honest, it's kind of a big blur when it happens. Before you go on is really when you start feeling all these things and you tell yourself, oh my God, I'm going to forget this, I'm going to forget that. But when you're really up there, it's kind of, you don't even realize, but everything just kind of blocks out and you're like, I'm going to do my job. I'm a singer, I'm here to sing, and I'm going to just kill it. Yeah, it, you, and, you do, yeah. and you do kill it, because I remember when yeah, you walked into it. Madison Square Garden, they did the sound check, boom, knocked it off, it was really good, you still had an hour before game time, you went up there, and in front of thousands of people, you just did what you just did there, it was amazing. It's, it's exhilarating, I mean, personally, being in front of huge crowds like that, that's my favorite part of being a singer, I love performing, but huge crowds are probably the most exhilarating thing ever, so... Um, to me, that was almost like the greatest thing I could do. So right. I almost felt more relaxed going in front of all those people than doing it here in front of a small studio. So I don't know. But it was a small <laughs> studio, but it was a bunch of um, veterans. Yeah. Uh, what does that mean to you when you see people come together that to serve for our country? Why is that important? It's just even hearing them talk we, when we were talking in the green room. It's just you hear these things that people are ignoring, and especially... At my age, you hear all these people on social media talking about really irrelevant things that don't really matter. And you're totally ignoring the things that are important. And I think there's not enough people who are realizing this. And my generation is so blinded by Kim Kardashian is doing all these things that don't matter. And you just hear all these people, they're helping us. They're putting their lives on the line to help us. And why can't we help them back? Why are we ignoring them? We should be giving them exactly what, we, what they gave us. Well said. Yeah. Yeah, yeah well said. And, and, and I know there's a lot of pride when you were singing. I, I noticed and, and seeing them standing behind you was an emotional time because these men and women and thousands out there have served our country. And we're going to talk to them in a little while. But you kind of started us off here with a beautiful rendition of the National thank Anthem. You. So we want to thank you so very much for joining here, us here. But you've always done things like this. <laughs> and I want to thank you personally for getting to know you and your family. You're a wonderful young lady and you have a bright future. And I hope once you make it really, really big, you made it big. Come back. 
Are you going to remember us? You can remember Brian and I? Of course. How okay. could I forget? Because I know where you live. I know where you live. Exactly. I, yeah. So if anything, I know you'll come and after me. If I can't me. find you, I'm going to find your mom. Then she's going to find you. She, uh, I don't know who to be more afraid of, to be honest. <laughs> right. But Annabelle, thank you so very much. Of course. And, uh, thank you. You're going to come back on the show and take us home in, in, on the chapter's wrap? Of course. All right. Yeah. I'm going to take a quick break. And after the break, our youth hero, uh, check it out. We are back here on the chapters wrap, and that is Kasha. She turns it out with that song, Hero. And we do it every time we have a youth hero. And today, we have another youth hero. Emily, welcome to the show. Hi, thank you for having me. Yeah, how old are you, Emily? I am 17. 17 years old. Now, we, I found out about you just recently. So tell all our viewers out there what you've been doing and what's coming on tomorrow. Well, ever since I was in fifth grade, I found out about Chrissy's Wish Memorial Foundation through my grandfather when he passed away. Um, the Corona Lions Club made an award in his honor and they were the first winners. And I just heard about BBRF and Chrissy's story and it really awakened me that I was in fifth grade but people my age were going through mental illnesses and their family and their friends and everyone's affected by it. So I knew I wanted to do something. So ever since I was in fifth grade, now I'm in 12th. So the last seven years, I've been fundraising for them, and I've raised over $3,000 through walkathons, mm -hmm. selling cupcakes, cookies. And now tomorrow, I will be having a fundraiser at Hurricane Grill in Syosset. And it's from 6 to close. And I will be having raffles and 50-50, and it's going to be a lot of fun. And, and how old are you, 17? Yes. And you've been doing this for a couple of years. What gave you the passion or the interest to do? Because most people... 13 or 14, don't do the things that you do. Well, ever since I was younger, I've always been interested in charity work, and I always knew. I grew up on Long Island, and we're very fortunate to have a home, to be healthy, and there's a lot of people that aren't that fortunate, and it's always great, in my opinion, to give back. And I've learned that through my family, and I'm also the president of a charity club in my school, the Awareness Club. So I've always very been involved in the community, and this is just one of the things I wow. Brian, Amazing, yeah. Think about Amazing. this young lady. And you, you're familiar with Linda Rossi, then? Yes, love Linda. <laughs> great, so, great woman. We've, yeah. we've seen her several times. Yeah. They do wonderful They're amazing work. Family. Yeah. What do, you, what do you think of the Rossi family and the work that they've done? You know, you know, they've done so much work for so many people, despite the challenge and adversity they they had to deal with years ago. It's amazing how they're doing what they're doing, but you're picking up on that and helping them. I think it's amazing. They're an amazing family, and after going through such a tragic loss, they really put it to good work and are raising money for such an amazing cause. And I really give it to them. It's amazing. And I just always would like to help them out because they're amazing. Everything I've heard about Chrissy is amazing. So I think they're great. So you're 17 now. Where do you see yourself in five years? Hopefully at the University of Delaware. Okay. <laughs> Hopefully there, and continuing charity work throughout my whole college career. Wow. And if there's some, it's amazing, isn't it? Yeah, I, mean, amazing, I mean, I don't yeah. know what you did at 17. Well, I yeah, certainly didn't do the things that Emily uh, did. Yeah, no. 
That's by comparison, she's like so far ahead of where you and I were. Right, right. Uh, giving back, and uh, it's it's just wonderful, wonderful work. Right. right. Thank you. But it's it's giving back. I guess you know that's the biggest thing. That's what this show is all about: is giving back and giving people a platform. And you're certainly doing that tomorrow. And we're going to see you at University of Delaware because it's a good yes. school, and, and so. it, you're exciting. And it, you're the like our second youth hero on the show. Um, what advice would you give to young people? or even older people, if they want to get involved in giving back? Because sometimes success is not measured by money. Mm -hmm. Success is measured by how you give back and pay it forward. But what advice would you give to other people? Honestly, the smallest thing could turn into something huge. I just started with a walk-a-thon with just my friends, raising just whatever amount it was, doesn't matter. It just built on every year. And I became the president of the Awareness Club because when I joined it in ninth grade, it just reminded me of what I was doing with Chrissy's Wish. We spread awareness about things throughout the community, and I love that, and I've always been for that. And just putting the word out there, informing people, spreading awareness, that's all that's important. That yeah, alone. That Go. awareness, yeah, yes. awareness. Yeah. It's the best. Emily DiGregorio, you're an amazing Thank young you. lady, and uh, we're so thankful that you came here on the show. Thank you for and, and I can't wait. I'm going to be there tomorrow, so I'm going to see you Thank in action. You. I can't wait. Yeah, <laughs> so we're, I'm going to try to get some more people out there. If you're out there, where are they going to go again? Hurricane Grill and Wings in Syosset. Okay. And what time does it start? It's from 6 to close. Okay, 6 to close. So be prepared to stay to close, guys. So, uh, <laughs> Emily, thank you so very thank much, so for much for joining us me. here on the Chapters Wrap. Thank you. And, and Brian, um, you know, Thanks we've talked about um, different things. I know with your book... Um, you talked about fear and your journey that you've went through, but we also, in a few minutes, we're going to talk to um, some veterans that also had their own journey. What, what are yeah, your absolutely. thoughts about that? Well, you know, it's like like you referred to my my uh, situation, and and I was talking to Lou before, and as as I said to him, when when I was looking for support for my own situation, I was looking uh, for people that have walked in my shoes, have had the same experience. Is and you can connect, and uh, and and take it to some positive direction. And with Lewis, the same thing. I believe that um, he's the best possible resource for veterans. The best. Right. They're looking for empathy and not sympathy. They're looking. They're looking for someone who's walked in their shoes, that they can relate to and even commiserate with, and. Um, that's why it can be successful. Right. You talk about Lou Falco, who is executive director and founder of Operation Initiative Foundation, Inc. Yeah. And I guess we're going to talk about He's got some special, special people that we're going to have a roundtable discussion yes, right he does. in the next yeah. set over there. But he talks about a lot of different issues, and one of the issues is suicide. And the yeah. suicide rate is extremely high for veterans. High. And uh, it really hits home. Last week we talked about suicide with Chrissy's Wish and Long Island Crisis and another family. And we're going to talk about suicide today in a different kind of forum. But as we were preparing for this show, we have a little clip that we want people to see because it, it focuses in on a veteran coming back from war, coming back from a, a difficult time, traumatic time, coming back to even more difficult time going through a divorce yeah. and how the United States government is really not really supporting him. Yeah, it gives you a little bit of an insight into the scope of the problems. You know, it's not coming home to one problem. Right. It's coming home to, you know, a whole, a whole myriad of problems that uh, they face and uh, the difficulty they have in adjusting and, and uh, you know, picking up a life here. And right. this video is very powerful. Right. And I think it'll set, uh, it'll set up our roundtable discussion well. Well, let's go to the clip. And after the clip, we'll, have, uh, we'll meet Lou Falco and some other people that has served our country. But take a look at this clip. I remember the letter I got from my wife while I was in Iraq. She said she wasn't happy.
Others came home to a hero's welcome. I came home to the echo of an empty house. I lived with my children for eight years. I raised them when my wife worked. I fought for joint custody. I was called a murderer and an assassin in front of a judge. Why should I miss out on raising my children just because she isn't happy? I make $45,000 a year. She makes forty. After taxes, child support, child care, health care, I have 18000 a year left to live on. I followed the rules. I went to the so-called friend of the court for some relief. They just said, it's the law. When I got laid off from work, I went there again, four times. Showed them the paperwork, and each time they told me I was in skilled trades and it should be easy for me to find a job. I guess they don't live in the real world. I had to pay the child support with my 401k. Ten years, I saved for my retirement. She got half, and the rest got spent to keep me out of jail. Then the money ran out. She's not happy, so now I live in poverty. The court has no problem slapping me in jail when I can't pay my child support, but she hasn't let me see my kids for a year, and when I go in front of a judge six times, all she gets are warnings. She's not happy, so now I can't see my children. Because she's not happy. I'm a felon. Because she is not happy, now I must go to prison. I got called up to go to war for my country. I got sent 7,000 miles away to bring freedom to those oppressed. Now my country has stripped me of my children. Now my country has forced me into poverty and servitude. Now my country has turned me into a criminal and has doomed me to prison. All because she was not happy. I don't deserve this.
Brian, we just saw a war veteran, a reenactment, coming back home to a divorce situation, yeah. um, um, a government that's not supporting him, and ultimately, because of all the struggles and the trauma that he went through serving, but also coming home, he ultimately committed suicide. Yeah, he felt he ran, ran out of options. Right. And um, I think that's why we're here, to, uh, to try and get that across, that there are options. It's work that Lou and, and all these gentlemen do. And women. And, uh, we need to, and women. And we need to get that across to as many people as we can. Right. Lou Falco, I ask you, you just saw the clip. What are your thoughts about this gentleman coming home to a real difficult situation after serving our country? Well, it seems to me there's just so many stories like this, Steve, that uh, veterans come back and they don't know how to relate to, you know, their wives and their families because they're still going through their traumatic experience from war. And stuff like this happens. That's why we are here today to try to prevent these things, suicides and families getting broken up because of the war. Right. Okay. Um, I'm here today with some really tremendous people who have been serving Long Island for over 20 years in the industry. Mr. Frank Amalfitano from the United Veteran Beacon House, Mr. Tom Renane, Suffolk County Services directly for veterans, and he goes out on the suicide hotline, and he's the first responder for the veteran there. Tom is there in that traumatic experience to help that veteran turn around. Also, when we needed Jesse and Ragley Lazarus, they are directors in my foundation that we're dedicating to bringing awareness and raising funds for veterans and their families, past, present, and future, who suffer from post-traumatic stress. And we'd like to know all the servicemen that are there. We're sending manuals overseas so they know there are Americans back here like people that are sitting right here that are willing and able to help you and get you to the agencies that you need so you don't have a traumatic experience and you don't have to break up your family on such films that you just showed me. Right. Operations Initiative um, Foundation Inc. Explain that for our viewers. What is that all about and why did you create it? Well, it all started from this manual and uh, the Glencoe Rotary gave me, this Vietnam vet, a chance to give back. And this is something that's been a dream since I came back from Nam, that there had to be a better way to receive our veterans who've just gone on for the war. And I'm sorry that it had to take almost 50 years later. But what you have now is Operations Initiative Manual, which everybody that's sitting here is in this manual. And it cuts the red tape for our veterans to get to the agencies that are really going to help them. Not put them on a shelf, but they're going to answer them immediately and get them to the agencies they need. Right. And this is why this manual was created through Rotary. It has just been endorsed by the Department of Social Services for Nassau and Suffolk County. They are actually using this reference manual to aid the veterans that come into them. So to me, it's a tremendous start, but I'm the rookie here. These two gentlemen have been my mentors to get where we're going. Because right. now we're joining forces on the very serious problem in this country, which is our veterans committing suicide every day. Right, right. And before we get to everybody, <clears throat> we have another clip, a news clip, of uh, an actual suicide that occurred recently. And I want everybody on the panel to take a look at it and maybe we could start off the roundtable discussion by comments of that we're about to see. So let's roll the clip. Sure. That was Daniel Summers that ultimately committed suicide, unfortunately. But you, too far, too many times this happens. And maybe someone on the panel could comment on the suicide rate locally and maybe nationally. You know, one of, one of the things that we are, we are experiencing here on Long Island and across the United States, um, tragically is a, uh, a disturbingly high rate of suicide amongst veterans. And unfortunately, the, the solution, I'm not quite sure what that solution might be, but um, I can promise you that it, it's not an easy solution. Uh, it's a complex issue. Uh, we're dealing with individuals. We're dealing with a, 
a, a multitude of, of different individual experiences. And I think that goes to the, to the heart of so many of the issues that afflict um, veterans when they are returning home, um, that we can't cast a broad net and say that one size fits all. The experiences, those unique experiences, shape the responses that those individuals have to those experiences. Um, I, I, I think one thing that is lacking in the community, and we're, we're, we're working very, very hard on this, is to expand and enhance the awareness within the community, to stimulate um, a, 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 a discussion, to have this conversation um, in ways that we include our larger community. This is not an issue, you know, we talk about veterans, we talk about veteran suicide. The truth of it is, while this, we talk about the veterans themselves completing the act of suicide, it is not the veteran alone who is affected by this. Our families, our professional colleagues, our friends, everybody within the, the sphere of influence um, of that individual person. Uh, and the majority of those people are non-veterans. So it's important that we have this discussion in a way that includes our entire community. Well, why, why do you think there's such a disconnect with young people uh, even understanding the concept of war or even the basic facts that are going on? The suicide rate is extremely high amongst veterans, but I don't think too much of the general population knows that. I, I would agree. I, I, it's, it's, it's infrequent that you see a reference to it in the media, and I think that that's unfortunate. I think that this is an important issue. It's a, it's a social issue. Um, I mean, this, this is something that affects most people at some point in their lives. We will know somebody um, close to us who, um, who makes the decision to take their own life. Um, we have people in our community who are um, really just remarkably um, strong individuals who are suffering through um, very difficult times um, relating to experiences that they've had. And um, you know, I, I want to be very careful that while we're having this discussion, and suicide relates to mental wellness, mental health, mental illness, um, generally, but not always. Um, I want to be very clear that while you know we're, we're profiling veteran suicide tonight, um, I don't want to paint the picture of our returning veterans, and even those of us, some of us antiques who have been home for a long time, Cut out. Um, <laughs> that, that all veterans are broken, because that, that is far, far from the truth. Most veterans are not affected to the extent that we're seeing when, 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 when they go to the lengths of, of attempting or completing the act of suicide. Uh, what we need to do is, is just significantly ramp up the awareness. We need the help of the media. And profiles, forums like this are incredibly important. We need to be able to uh, share with our friends and our neighbors uh, what is happening in the community and, and, and go from there. Um, we, have, we have some very effective um, and demonstrated very effective um, um, programs in place right here in Suffolk County. Our friends to the west of Nassau County have some of the very same programs, uh, but if the community doesn't have an awareness of these programs and how to access them, we're not going to be able to provide the support and the resources that uh, that are so terribly needed. Right. Well, I think one of the keys of what you said is the, the is the the stigma, the stigma of mental wellness. All right, uh, we discussed earlier that you know, a lot of the vets come back, um, they don't go to the VA. They go to the VA. The first thing the VA does is put them on medication. The minute they put them on medication, now they have a psychiatric record. And that's why they don't go. They don't want to be. You know, it's it's a stigma to to go for mental wellness right. today it's a stigma it's it's so so that you, you they're just naturally withdrawing from doing it and then you get into the self-medication you know and they get into the uh, there's just the well, door just opens up like this the you know? the alternative yeah. yeah there's it's another you know? it's 70 percent of our veterans that come back from a war zone want no part of the government or the veterans administration and this has to stop because how can we help them if they don't trust it. So this is why we need an American movement of the people to come in and support these organizations of what we're doing here so we can stop this suicide and let these veterans know who's coming home that your country's here to help you the but, right way. But there are a lot of services out there. The Blue Star Mothers, the Gold Star uh, families, uh, they get the word out. Uh, you know, to prevent suicide, prevent uh, to help assist veterans with PTSD. There's a TWIRE program 
Northwell Health has a program, and these programs are anonymous. They don't have to report, they don't have to give their names, they don't have to give a social security number, they just come in and say, I need help. Unfortunately, when they walk into the VA, as uh, Jesse pointed out, one of the, the first things the VA does is puts everything in a computer. So, and the veterans noticed, active military noticed, so they're reluctant. Reluctant to tell their whole story or what their problems are, what their needs are. There are a tremendous amount of services in Nassau and Suffolk County. We network, United Veterans Beacon House, Suffolk County Veterans Service Agency, we network with dozens of other organizations on Long Island to help prevent suicide. I don't, I, I don't want to be the dissenter in the group. Um, I'm a service-connected disabled veteran, uh, and I will tell you that I do use the VA for some of my own care. I also choose to receive some of my own care outside of the VA. There are many, many reasons why veterans may choose or not may choose to use VA or not use VA. Um, some of them are um, very valid and very real. Some of them are really rooted in in myth and lack of understanding. Uh, you know, there's a saying at the VA today that, uh, and the VA has evolved um, tremendously over the past right. decade. Without so a doubt, there's, there's a saying at the VA today that um, it's this is no longer your father's VA. Uh, you know, we've got so many anecdotal experiences where a guy, will, a young returning Afghanistan veteran will tell me that I'm not going to the VA. My uncle Harry had a terrible experience when he came home from Vietnam. Right. It's not the same place. Right. Right. That doesn't change the fact that the privacy concerns, right. the reporting, the stigmatization of mental illness uh, are all very real. And, you know, military veterans, uh, you know, not to, you know, be overly dramatic here, but it's a warrior culture. Right. And we tend to not self-identify as having things like mental illness because in the world that we come from, the training, and this is very similar to law enforcement and even firematic services, um, in the world that we come from, uh, we view things like, uh, unfortunately, mental illness as being a, a weakness, a weakness or a failure right. or a vulnerability, and that's tragic. Right. It's no because place in it, a foxhole. There's no place in the fire. And, right. you know, I always use the analogy of if I had a broken leg, would I hide it from those people who I care about? Would I, would I, would I shun those around me and act as if that broken leg were not a, real, a reality? Of course not. Right. Mental illness is no different. It's a psychological or emotional injury resulting from an experience that you have had. In most cases, I'm not going to um, get into diagnostics, um, but... There is help. There are resources available, as Frank said, both VA and non-VA, and some of the routes are outstanding. VA has also come a great way um, over the past several years, certainly here on Long Island, with understanding that there are veterans who simply are averse to going to VA. So the VA has become a, a better partner mm -hmm. with working with us outside right. of VA to ensure that yeah. Yeah. whichever door the veteran chooses to walk through, that at least they have access to walk through that door. Right. Yeah, I think it's good that you, you bring up that awareness and the clarity that you bring to it because, they, I mean, there is still a certain stigma attached to, you know, VA care. <clears throat> so people say, oh, to the Veterans Hospital. You know, this is stuff from years ago, but, you know, you, you seem to be creating some awareness and, and clarity of the, of the changes that have been made. And, and the resources available today, you know, aren't what they were 20, 30 years ago. Well, there's ago. dramatic changes, just right. as, as has been said. I'm 69 years old. I'm a Vietnam veteran. I use 100% of the VA. I'm also disabled vet. I use 100% of the VA services. They're as good as any other hospital on Long Island. Exactly. Talk about it. They need to speak to you. They need to speak to people like, you know, like when they when they want uh, to connect with someone, they want to speak to somebody who's walked in their shoes. And I think it's important for someone who does take advantage of the VA services to spearhead the, you know, the movement to change their mind about it. Because, you know, no one would know better than a veteran who's using those services today to be able to say it. It's well, not it's and to, and to that point, one of the things that veterans probably more than anything else uh, value is trust. And there are few places where veterans find trust, more, more, tr more a, a truer trust than amongst other, with veterans. other veterans. We relate to one another, um, we just relate to one another differently. And that's not- We're, we're in different way. branches of the service, but we're brothers. Right. right. I mean, there's no doubt about it. No. You, are, you are the best resource for veterans. 
But the, the thing I still want to I, I want to express though, because I'm still not satisfied, and I know I know what you're saying, Frank, and, and it, I know a lot of people that the VA is doing wonderful things for, but some of the things that we're doing, <clears throat> all right, where in other words, where they don't go to the VA, some of the things that we're doing, you know, we're we're the safety net, quote unquote, okay, we're a safety net full of holes. We we we, we can't do enough, right. you know. So the VA's really got to think that really make they got to make the appeal you know to the community and to the veterans that hey you know we're here we're real we want to help you you talk to anybody that's any soldier that's been through Walter Reed and they can't tell you one bad thing about the place you talk about some of these clinics throughout the country and you, they can't tell you one good thing about the place so it's you know we're lucky we're lucky we're here you know New York is, is, is pretty good um, but there's a lot of places that aren't but there's always room for improvement, and there's Absolutely. always budget concerns. Sure. Right. That's the biggest drawback is the budget concerns. I, I mean, the, the people at the VA, sure, they want to do things, but can they do it all? No, they can't. They certainly can't because they have budgets. When there's something, which Tom could attest to, if there's an issue at the VA somewhere else in the country and they need money to take care of that, you know, it could be a bricks and mortar problem, they'd take it from all the VAs around the country. I've traveled around the country. I've been to about 15, 20 VAs. And I, I got to make this statement. Northport is f by far one of the best in the country. So what makes it? What makes Continue. Northport different than? They others? care. They listen. They, they, we go to meetings over there. They, you know, there's a tremendous homeless program at Northport. Tremendous, tremendous mental health program. They network with other hospitals. They're the only VA in the country that's partners with the, uh, a private entity, Northwell Health. They have I think a clinic one the, right here, right in Bayshore. Right. One of the other things that Tom had pointed out earlier was that, um, you know, they, they, Long Island, you know, we have a, a superior number of veterans in, a, in our small locale than a lot of other places do in the country. Right. So, you know, you got a bunch of veterans sitting around and one veteran's not getting taken care of right, you know, there's a bunch of people going to stand up and say something. So, and, but Northport has really come They've come a long, long way. Well, one, one of the things that Northport does, and I think to Frank's point, Northport, um, I think uniquely, provides a forum for not only the veterans, but to leaders in the veterans community to meet with leadership at the medical center and to discuss our concerns, um, identify problems, and identify resolutions to those problems. And I think they're, they're largely proactive in that, in that area. Um, that translates into a higher level of service being delivered to our veterans. And I think that the veterans understand that. Uh, right. Veterans know that when they go to VA, you know, to Jesse's point also, um, Long Island um, as a region is second only to um, Orange County or San Diego, San Diego, San Diego area of mm -hmm. California in terms of veterans population. Exactly. Of the 62 counties that make up the state of New York, Suffolk County has more veterans than any of those other counties in the entire state. We're the single most populous county by tens of thousands of veterans. There is nobody that's very close behind us. The next most populous county in the state of New York is Nassau. Right. So as a region, we really are sort of the center of the world in the Northeast United States for veterans and veterans' needs and veterans' care. So, Northport understands the, the enormous responsibility that I think goes along with that and uh, they've responded to that. Uh, you know, they, with any organization the size of the VA, there are going to be bumps in the road. There are going to be problems. Right. Um, For viewers just tuning in, maybe you can just go around a little bit so they get a sense of what you, how you serve our country so they have a better understanding what the panel is all about. So anybody want to jump in? Maybe you want to start? Magalie Lazarus. I was in the Army Reserve for six years. Um, I was in Belmore. I think they shut down the, um, the base, but um, and through my experience, I've met a lot of uh, Vietnam vets. Um, they didn't like talking about their experiences, but I saw in their eyes the, the sorrow and the hurt. And that was the thing that really wanted me to help them out in the future. So um, I attended, I went to Hofstra University. I got a Master's of Science in Counseling. And uh, I then, a few years later, hooked up with uh, Lewis. And we just opened up a center at uh, 600 Albany Avenue, so. Liberty Village. Mm -hmm. Right in front of Liberty Village. <laughs> so it's the best place Sir? to be, Frank. Frank Amalfitano, I was in the U.S. Air Force for four years. I was a canine handler, security policeman, and uh, quick story, 
my dog that I picked up out of Texas went to Germany, I went to Vietnam. So I uh, came home in 19, uh, about 1995-96, I walk into a little thrift store and a guy says to me, welcome home. I said, what are you talking about? I've been home since 1970. He saw this expression amongst us Vietnam vets. Mm -hmm. So I, I said, uh, well first they, he asked me if I was a vet, I identified myself, then he asked me if I was a Vietnam vet. Well that led, on, led a journey for me, put me on a journey. Uh, now, uh, I'm the CEO and the president of United Veterans Beacon House. We house about 250 uh, veterans a day in 39 different locations throughout Nassau and Suffolk County. We network with several other organizations. I can't even begin to name them all. But I put, th this is going to be a, a, a statistic that you're not going to believe on Long Island, Suffolk County, through Suffolk County, and some of, the residents, some of our residents come from Nassau, but they actually come from all over the country. We put over 14,000 veterans through our doors since 1999. Homeless wow. veterans. Homeless. Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's the blessing. Men and women. Wow. Wow. Lou? Yeah. Lou. Lou Falco. I am a United States Marine who walked point in Vietnam. I'm one of the fortunate ones that I came back. But when I came back, I was so embarrassed of what had happened, I didn't even want my mother to see me. And I said as I was coming back, I said, there's got to be a better way to bring a soldier back for more, seeing that my family's been fighting since San Juan Hill. So 35 years later, this manual happened through the Glencoe Rotary and gave me a chance to give back. And for the last five years, I've done everything I can to bring all these great organizations to the forefront because they belong to the forefront. When I first met this man, I told him, I'm the rookie here. You're doing it 22 years. But the country needs to know what we're doing. Yeah. They have to know, and this manual is being sent overseas to let them know. The organizations are here. We're ready to help you. Don't turn on your country. Don't turn on the VA, because they've tried everything they could. It's a rough job, believe me, folks. It's a rough job. But they need help, too. The Veterans Administration in Washington, D.C. would love to get involved with the manual so they can think outside the box. So they, can, they know they're 70% not coming back to them. They want to reach them, too. So they're trying also. It's not like they don't care. They're trying because they know it's a problem. Mm -hmm but it's the rest of the country that has to know it too. So what you're saying too, you went through your own experiences, traumatic experience with war, but 35 years later, you have this now. That's a, that's a message for young people out there too, that you can persevere and do the things that you need to do for other people, even after 35 years. It's a blessing to see all you guys here tonight. Don't give up, you never give up. Sir? Um, Tom Ronane, I am the director of the Suffolk County Veteran <coughs> Service Agency. We are a department within the office of the um, county executive in Suffolk County. Um, I'm a four-year veteran of the U.S. Navy. Um, I volunteered for service after Vietnam. Um, I went, um, I made two trips to Beirut, Lebanon uh, in support of the uh, Marine Expeditionary Units while we were um, evacuating, um, at the time, hostile elements. Today we call them the PLO. Um, and one visit uh, to a place called El Salvador. So uh, I've traveled the world, um, I've seen some wonderful things, I've seen some less than wonderful things, but um, I can tell you that every day when I wake up and open my eyes, um, I know that going back out there and focusing on a mission that I have recommitted myself and rededicated myself to, and that is um, ensuring that if there's a veteran out there who needs help, if, there's, if it's humanly possible for me to have any role in facilitating their access to um, whatever it may be that they need, whether it's a a gas card to put fuel in their automobile, food for their kitchen table, um, or a room to sit down with a doc or, or, or a clinician and, and get the, the support and the help that they need. Um, that's what we do. That's Thank what we you do. So much. Uh, my name is Jesse Cromer. Um, I spent 10 years in the United States Navy. I got When I got out, I was Chief Petty Officer. And um, through my 10 years, I've been, um, I was also in Beirut. We were there when they blew the barracks up. We were uh, over there doing guard duty while they were taking out the, the dead Marines, which was a horrific. Um, I was in Honduras, mm -hmm. Central America, good old Central America. I remember that was an odd day. Um, 
But um, I, I, in my 10 years in the service, uh, the dedication that the military people and their families, everybody forgets about the families. You know, the families put in just as tough duty as we do, you know? You got a wife at home raising, I mean, in my case, my, my wife was raising three children alone. Because in my 10 years in the Navy, I was eight years at sea. You know, so, uh, you know, the dependence, you know, um, it's, it's almost like a kid growing up without a father. It's, and it's, it's almost like, a, you know, a wife being a single parent, you know. Um, yeah, you get letters, you know. At that time, we didn't have email. Most it was a letter, all right, you know. <laughs> you know. Boy, so, uh, yeah, Boy, you know. Boy, um, Boy, remember that? <laughs> but um, um, I'm a Rotarian also. I was, uh, I'm, I'm past president of JFK Airport Rotary Club, and I got involved with this with, with Louie. Um, when I heard about it, I was very interested in it, and I jumped on board with both feet. And um, we're, we're trying to raise money. We raised money to, to get the books published, right? Now we have a website, it's online. We really don't need to go with the paper books anymore. Um, we can do it online, but we need what we need money for is, we're talking about these holistic treatments that right. most insurance companies don't cover. Right. The VA is looking into it now, by the way. They, they, they're coming around with some, with some very they good, uh, they yeah, they, they really want to. They really want to get into the holistic approach. Um, and um, it's, uh, to me, it's a no-brainer. I mean, you know, if I walked up to you and said, hey, you know, you can save somebody's life for $400, what are you going to do? You, you open your wallet, man. It's, right. not, right. it's no no-brainer, right. you know, there's no thinking about it. Right. So that, that's why uh, it's very important. Um, the, the havening, I'm, I'm big on the havening. I, I, I think that's one of the greatest things coming out now, and, uh, and it's, it works. And uh, we have certified people here. If the vet, um, if, if the VA won't, won't cover any of the expenses and the insurance company that the, the, the veteran has won't cover the insurance company for the treatments, we will, we will jump in there and, uh, and take care of it. And that's one of the reasons we need the funds, and that's why we're... I mean, we really, really need to be here, you know. Everybody sitting on this couch really, really gives a damn. Mm -hmm. and, um, and, and, I mean, I'm just so proud to be sitting with these people right now. I really am. Well, it is a blessing to have you here. We, and both Brian and I, thank you for serving. Thank you. And, yeah, and your extended service besides. Right. Right. Absolutely. Lou, That's talk it. about how do we bridge this gap? Because this political climate today, you know, with the debates going on and not knowing what the next day brings... What is Operation Initiative want to do at this point, and how can they get a hold of you and the program? All right. Uh, the best thing with the awareness is bringing the education, letting the family members know of the veterans that there are alternative sources if they're suffering from post-traumatic stress. Um, you can get in touch with me through the Operations Initiative, O-P-I-N-I-T-F-D-N dot org. And that gets you to us at the center. Call, make an appointment, come down and speak to us. We're right there in 600 Albany Avenue, North Amityville. And we're in 535 on South Broadway in Hicksville. And we are an outreach center for references for all the different areas that you need. You'll come in there and you'll talk to us. and. We'll get you to the right agency that you need and cut the red tape. And the people in this book are going to pick the phone up. They're going to speak to you and they're going to take you on as you need to be taken on. And then if there is the post-traumatic stress, they can come to us and they have their choice of what holistic treatment they want to go to. And if it works, they're going to be better off for it. Um, we don't have a suicide hotline called up for this yet, and thank God Tom is still at the helm doing that. Nassau okay. has one too. Nassau has one also. Okay. But we are having an event on uh, November 19th at the Mouse Trap, mm -hmm. where everybody can get come down and donate and get involved for what we're doing. Right. Uh, the uh, Madhouse TV has been nice enough to come down there with us, with Tommy and Tommy, to help us get this message across. We're going to have some great entertainment, great food, great spiritual singing to bring the message that there is a way to do this. And information is the best thing. 
if a family knows that there is some agency that's going to help their husband or their wife that have served, they can come in and see us. And we're all veterans here. So right. they're not coming to, you know, they're not coming to like the, the magnifying glass and, you know, where you've been over your life. No, they're coming to veterans that have been down and dirty with them, mm -hmm. burning the leeches off their legs, just like they have. Right. And I got to show the picture. The picture, every picture that tells a story, well, this picture tells a million words. They're in that war zone. They don't want to hear broken promises from anybody. Once they put their lives on the line, they want to know their country's 100% behind them, just the 200% they gave us. No more broken promises, America. We need to do this now. And again, what's the phone number they can reach you at? 631-926-2066. Okay. And that's my number. And at the, uh, the Hicksville office is 1-855-3730, uh, extension 204. That's my direct line. Uh -huh. We want to thank you very, very much for joining us here on the Chapters Wrap at Manhouse TV and spreading that message out. That's important for young people because there is a disconnect. And for the general population, to really, they really need to support veterans out there. And we want to thank you for coming on the show again. We want to thank you, Steve. Thank, for thank you for having us. Thank you. And very Tommy good. also. Sure. Great. Great. Thank you. We're going to take a quick break. And after the break, taking us home, more of Annabelle. All right. Galaxy Luxury Coach is a full-service limousine and party bus company. Family-owned and operated, we are an industry leader with over 25 years of experience in providing best-in-class luxury transportation for your special event. Whether it's your precious wedding day, an all-day wine tour out east, your high school prom, that special birthday, or just an amazing night on the town, our professional chauffeurs stand ready to ensure your special event is truly special. Galaxy Luxury Coach has one of the largest and modern party bus fleets in the New York area. Our party buses are simply nightclubs on wheels. Concert sound systems, light shows, lasers and strobes, multicolor LED lighting brilliantly lights your party bus inside and out. For corporate and more laid back events, we will cater to your specific needs and requests. What sets Galaxy aside from all others in the luxury transportation industry is our attention to detail in customizing our services to your special event. At Galaxy, it's all about you and your guests. Galaxy customers return time and time again because they know they can trust Galaxy to help deliver those lifetime memorable moments. Step aboard and let your Galaxy experience begin. Welcome to Formula Auto Wash, where every day is a great day for a car wash. Open seven days a week from 8 a.m. to 5.30 p.m. Sundays, 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. Detailing packages for every budget, starting out at $29.99. 100% hand wash and detail centre. Pods hair and microfiber brushes and mitts. Proudly using Ecolab Blue Coral soaps and waxes. Formula Auto Wash has served the community for over 30 years. See any discounts all day, every day. Ladies Day Wednesday, $3 off any wash. Early bird discount Monday through Thursday till 9.30 a.m. Check out our website, formulaautowash.com. It's an important message for how veterans out there that really give back to the community. And we're going to thank Lou Falco, Operations Initiative Foundation, Inc. And Emily, you have that event. One more time, how can people get a hold of you? Yes, um, tomorrow at Hurricane in Syosset, starting at 6 till close, we will be there. And I would love to see you all there. All right, taking us home, Annabelle. What you doing to me when you chose to be all I see? 
Did you call my name? That was it. I found what I need. Oh well. Look at what I'm so alive. When I see you, I say, Oh my. Won't you take a seat next to me so I get my mind? Just push my lips and we'll pick it up much later Time's a wasting girl, so don't wait, don't wait too long I know there's many in my head, but you're the best one among them Call me baby, babe, call me baby, call me baby I love drinking my heart to you, so yes, that's all you need to do Call me baby, babe, call me baby, call me baby, call me baby The tragic fall that won't leave Till you show your belief in me Even if the world goes and betrays us I know I'm my lady So let's agree to keep you and me I know there's many in my head But you're the best one among them Call me baby, baby, call me baby Call me baby I love to give my heart to you So yes, that's all you need to do Call me baby, baby, call me baby, call me baby, call me baby, call me baby. No one else can make me feel this way. Not a doubt in my mind, you're the one, you're the one. Girl, you're the one, you're the one. I love to give my heart to you. So yes, that's all you need to do. Call me baby, baby, call me baby, call me baby, call me baby. Call me baby, call me baby. Running around in circles for so long. Call me baby, call me baby, call me baby.